So in order to make this video, I had to clean the kitchen. Thank you for motivating me. Today I'm going to tell you what I learned in battle. It's really fun making beer. Because when I came to Norway, I came to work at um, uh, construction. They were building a kingdom hall and seven condos in downtown Oslo. And the society was very apologetic about building condos with free labor. Because they said, you know, that's really not we want what we want to do, but you know, we have to do it. And so we built condos and the Kingdom Hall, and later they sold it. So anyway, so when we were working there, uh, we were all living together in a house, and the brothers were making beer. And in Norway, you're allowed to make beer as long as it's under five percent of alcohol, and you're allowed to make wine as long as it's twenty-one percent of alcohol or less, I think. And um, making vodka and stuff like that is really illegal. It's illegal to uh, make it, buy it, own it, sell it, drink it, everything is illegal. So the brothers would get malt like this and brew beer. And the recipe normally say that some people would add sugar, however, that's illegal. And that's exactly what the brothers did because no one cares. They added a lot of sugar because sugar is cheap because you can go down into the society's kitchen and just take it. So they made beer and it was really terrible beer. It tasted like shit. And then I was working at Bethel and as a construction worker and we were working in a different building. So we were allowed to have our coffee breaks in that building and that's really nice because otherwise we would have to put on a shirt and stuff. So, and it was a sister, she was really happy. She, I'm allowed to work at Bethel even though I'm a woman and such a privilege. So she was happy, she was allowed to clean other people's room without getting paid even though she's female. <laughs> oh, it sounds so weird when you left. Anyway, so she was happy. But I was most listening to the cupboard because uh, in the closet I could hear this bloop, 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 because when you make wine, it goes bloop, bloop, from the carbon dioxide escaping. And I could hear the cupboard say bloop, 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 bloop. So I asked them, how many is in there? And the brother asked, answered, three. No, two, but normally he used to have three. And I asked him, was he making beer or wine? And he said, beer. And he's, I said, I don't like homemade beer. It's no good. And he said, that's because they're using sugar instead of malt. You should only use malt and hops. And also, so he taught me how to do it. And also when you put it on bottles, you should, I use bottles like this. And... Uh, if you put it in too early, when you open it, it, it will explode. But if you put it in too late, it will just say... So he taught me how to do it. You, you use a measurement like this. You put it in the beer. And then you can read the content of sugar. And when it passes 10, so it's between 10 and 8, you put it in glass and then it's perfect. So he taught me to make really, really, really good beer. And... That's fun because I make better beer than I could afford to buy. So, and then the sister that was happy over being allowed to clean toilets, even though she was a woman, she told me that basically every room on Bethel she would hear from the closet. Bloop, 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 bloop. And I already knew that because when you're walking through the hall in the middle of the day, when the air is not moving, you could smell the, you know, the carbon dioxide <laughs> from <laughs> building up as long as the air is standing still. And also we had a workshop uh, and there was some oak there, oak material, and one high-ranking uh, brother, I won't say his name, he came down one evening and started cutting up the oak. And I asked him why, and he said he wanted to use the carvings into his wine because he wanted it to taste like some fancy stored on oak barrels wine. So, and it's really nothing wrong with making your own wine. Uh, not necessarily mean they're drinking too much. I've never see, seen anyone drink too much on the Norwegian Bethel. I've seen it other places. But, um, and also on Bethel they have like a kiosk or co a commissionary, commissionary. Uh, they can buy bananas and chocolate and stuff. Uh, but potatoes are free because at least in Sweden, I think you could go down according to what they told me. You can just go to the basement and get vegetables for free. So people actually took potatoes, uh, cleaned them, cut them up in pieces, froze them for 48 hours, and then made potato wine. 
because there's a lot of carbs in potatoes. You can make potato wine. So, but like I said, moonshine is illegal in Norway and I don't make my own moonshine, and, but a lot of people do. And uh, so they have special needs on the convention that you shouldn't buy moonshine because it's illegal. And I see some of the elders are smiling to each other because they do. And then afterwards they come up with all excuses. I remember one common thing is, well, I, my family is not interested in the truth. And, but since we already say no to celebrating Christmas and everything, when they want to give me a, a, a canister of homemade vodka, it would really be so rude and such a bad witness to turn it down. <laughs> so they are stretching it. And we can't celebrate Christmas, but please give me some illegal booze. <laughs> uh, and I remember one circuit overseer, he wasn't circuit overseer at the time, he, he, he was pioneering, but he used to be a circuit overseer. And witnesses, well, they have this um, don't ask, don't tell rule, but they also like to do word games, like splitting up uh, an event in different small events. And all of the small events are okay by themselves. So he started talking and in the beginning I couldn't understand what he was aiming at. But he said, you know, field serving is important. Field service is important. Well, yeah. And I have a return visit. I go to him with the magazines and he showed no interest, but we shouldn't judge. So I keep going. Well, okay. And then he continued, well, uh, being generous is a good idea. As Christians, we can give gifts without asking selflessly expecting to get anything in return okay yeah that's true and he said since this man living alone in the forest i assume he likes picking blueberries and want to make a lot of blueberry jam stuff like that so i used to buy him big bulks of sugar and give it to him and he's very grateful okay and sometimes out of the blue he gives me a five liter canister of vodka, which I assume, because as Christians, we can't assume the worst. I assume it's legally vodka that he, for practical reasons, decided to put in a five liter canister. So that was the story. When he broke it up, it was perfectly legal thing to do. So, <laughs> but in real life, those that make moonshine and sell they have a hard time getting enough sugar because people know if you buy really big bulks of sugar, you're up to no good. But in his case, he had a good way of solving that problem because Jehovah's Witnesses came to him with a magazine and brought sugar. <laughs> so I won't say the name of the, the, the pioneer, obviously. He's a nice guy, but he was basically partaking in a criminal activity while uh, reporting ours as a pioneer. <laughs> but on Bethel, if you've ever been on Bethel, everything is about it should look good, you should keep a nice appearance and making a good witness. So witnesses drink alcohol and that's no problem. But the problem is that when you have 100 Bethelites in a small place, in, like Bethel in Norway, and all of them having the same schedules, and all of them dressing like Jehovah's Witnesses, because they, that's, they have one outfit, like Kingdom Hall or Field Service. So, since they all have the same schedule, they always end up going to the liquor store at the same time. So that's a bad witness. So they ask you to go to another city. Problem is, since they all have the same schedule, they all end up in the same liquor store in the next city instead. So they've been discreetly asked to buy in bulk. But that's also a problem because if someone come once a month and buy too much, that's also noticeable. So then they said, if you buy in bulk, you should not buy more than you can carry to the car and you put it in the trunk and you kind of conceal it and you take it into your room without anyone notice because you shouldn't stumble the week. So 
you do the boost run, but you're not allowed to go back and forth to the store many times and you should conceal it and put it in your trunk. So when I saw the bottle gate, I don't care about him going far away to buy whiskey that was on sale. But what I noticed with their brother, Anthony Morris, was that he bought 12 bottles of vodka, uh, whiskey, but he didn't put it in the trunk. Everyone says he passed several liquor store before he came to this place. Maybe he didn't. The first rule about buying alcohol in bulk for Battle Light is put it in your trunk. What could he possibly have in his trunk? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, it's probably not window cleaning equipment or ink to the printing presses. There's just a reason. Yeah, it's not really an, on my problem. <laughs> he did not put it in the trunk, so maybe he'd been picking up groceries somewhere. Let's hope so. So that's my Bethel story. I have more stories. I hope you stay tuned. And today is a lovely day. And I'll just show you my kitchen. It's a nice kitchen. I had to clean it before you came because it doesn't look good. But you should have seen this place when I bought it because I was pining for 10 years. And then uh, when my ex-wife got sick, I had to stop pioneering. I bought this farm and I paid cash. So if you've been pioneering for 10 years and you can buy a farm cash, well, obviously I'm good, good with money, but also, it looked like crap. So, I made this kitchen. I'm kind of proud of that. So, I hope you like my story. Please partake from the subscription. And you will hear more stories. So, see you in paradise.